It's good people, this is Sam O'Reilly from Fight Talk. Delighted to be joined today by Mr. Tyler Goodjohn. How are you, mate? I'm all good, thanks, Sam. Cheers, mate. Um, let's go back a little bit before we sort of build up to what's happening today and where you are today. Um, you know, you're someone who's been in a lot of tough fights. Johnny Garton was the last time out. Yeah. Um, is that something that you sort of? I mean, your nickname's the Warrior, so I'd, I'd imagine it is. But have you always been? <laughs> a, have you always been a guy that likes getting involved in a, in a war and a tear up? Yeah, I think like right right back from my amateur days, I was um, I was always involved in good fights. I've got like loads of trophies at home where I got fight the night. I think like one thing with my fights, you always um, you always expected it to be a good fight. Yeah, and I sort of took that into the pros, and then. I think, like, well, you know, I've just I've had to take that hard road of taking hard fights and that because of uh, because of where I'm from, um, and and just selling tickets and that and being the away fighter. So, but I, you know, I thrive off that. I think um, you know, I love being in them fifty fifty fights. Win or lose, if you can come out and you've entertained the crowd, that's what it's all about. Well, you definitely did. You're in there with some. I mean, John Wayne here, but Boylan, they stand out. Those fights, they were crazy fights. Yeah. Um, yes. It's, you know, it, it's that you know when you look at like styles and stuff, and you come up against different yeah. opponents. Obviously, you want to make a fight a, a, as much about your own game. Is that is that what you you look you go into a fight and think you know what I just got to make this exciting and just go to war with people? Yeah, I think um, I'm my own worst enemy, really. Uh, <laughs> I think like with the with the boil and fight, you know, I had a I had a, a, a style to you know I, I went in to actually um, you know go forward and and have a fight and actually as as it fight turned out I got a cut and I ended up boxing on the back foot and I, and I proved I could box um, yeah. the Hibbert the Hibbert fight I mean you know whether I would I would have beat Hibbert or not but I had to lose a lot of weight and that was my last fight at 10 stone and to be honest I didn't really show I didn't really show anything in that fight um, but you know I wanted to I trained for I mean again we sort of trained for that fight to box and I just sort of just walked forward and I think I knew that first and second round I, I knew how I had nothing left and I, I just you know I, I had nothing but just to make a fight of it really yeah and then the, uh, yeah you know like, like the Tyrone Nurse fight as well again I, to be if I'm, if I'm truthful I don't think I'd ever beat him I just think he's, he's got the style to, to beat me nine times out of ten but I just went in there and just to make it an entertaining fight and it was so you know I'm pleased with that yeah, now let's look look at what you're doing now. I mean, your last fight was September. Um, yeah. And since then, I mean, I've seen you on your social media and stuff. You've got the, the Warriors Workshop. Tell me a little bit about that. That's just, um, I've just got, like, started a little gym back home in, in Ely, Cambridge here. I'm just, um, just teaching boxing and that. And, and obviously just, just fitness and, yeah, just getting, um, you know, putting back in all the, all the things that I've learned over the years, boxing. Uh, I'm just giving it to other people now, so you know, I'm really enjoying it. But it's, um, boxing has drawn me back in, and you know I'm, I'm only 25, and I just I keep thinking to myself, what if? And and uh, like I say, yeah, it's just drawn me back in, and I want to I want to have one more go at it, really, um, and just see what happens. Is that what it is? Is that being because obviously it's still very much around boxing, helping others like, like learn yeah. fitness, and it's just it's it's just called you back in now, yeah. Yeah, I think you know, like every every fight all says you know once a fight you're always a fighter and um, it's it's hard to walk away. I mean, that, to be honest, after the Garden fight, I was I was at the point where I didn't want to watch boxing. I, I didn't really want anything to to do with boxing. That actually made, obviously made my work really hard. Yeah. Um, you know, teaching boxing, but I didn't I didn't want to watch it or anything. And then just as the months went back on, and I realised how much how much I miss it and, and how much to be honest how much of a positive impact it has on my on my whole life you know in regards to like eating healthy being healthy you know it's just I, I miss that lifestyle and um, you know now I'm back doing it again I, I can see what I've missed if that makes sense so yeah you was at, you was yeah, at, you was at the boxing on Saturday as well weren't you yeah, that's it. And you know, to be honest with you, like five months ago, I, the last place I wanted to be was in a boxing show. But now I've got that buzz back, and you know, I'm I'm happy watching other fights and and thinking about my, you know myself fighting again. That's that's what I wanted, and I think it's the same with most fighters. I think you you fall in and out of love with the sport, but ultimately it always brings you back. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so we'll see what happens in the future. All right, well, let's let's look at the comeback. Well, I suppose you say comeback. We've been out since September, but like you say, you were a little dis- yeah. disillusioned with it at times, and you, yeah. you got yeah. the buzz back. Um, so training wise. Are you going to be based at your own gym and going out? What, how's it going to work? I have uh, my trainer, Steve Whitwell, in St. Ives, which is uh, back home, but I'm, I'm managed by Pete Sims up in, in Essex. Oh, you still manage Pete, one. yeah? Yeah, I'm managed by Pete, yeah. So I'll be, I'm actually going to go down and have a meeting with him tomorrow. You know, me and Pete, we were obviously got, we, we go way back. And um, yeah, so we're just going to have a meeting and, and just go from there. And, and see what happens, but um, you know, like like most fighters, obviously we've got I've got to work alongside training, so it means that I'm going to have to be based um, back home and that. And at the minute, like you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like I say, my, my trainer Steve Whitwell is a great trainer as well, and it's it's not it is nice to be back home and um, have everything on your doorstep. So. What about promotionally? Are you gonna? Do you know if you're gonna sort of still be an away fighter on the road? Is that is, is that even is that gonna be something you discuss with Peter Sims tomorrow? Yeah, something that I want to talk about. Like to be honest with you, I want um, you know if if I'm completely honest, I was at that show on Saturday and there was you know don't get me wrong, there was, there was three brilliant title fights, really good, but there was nine fights where you could basically pick who's going to win before they even walked into the ring and I don't mean really, I just don't want to be involved in them kind of fights so yeah um, I remember I, I, I boxed one up about about a year or so ago at the Yorkel after having a year out and I had to fight uh, a Croatian guy and I just um, I just remember in the build up to it and in the fight itself I just got no buzz whatsoever out of it um, just knowing that I could pretty much get in the ring with someone but even if I don't turn up on the, my A game um, you know, I'm, I'm going to beat him pretty hand- handily. So um, I'm hoping just to get one fight, just get set a bit of ring rust, and then I'm willing uh, to jump in with any any welterweight. Or if I got a call at eleven stone, at eleven stone as well, I'm, I really don't care who I fight. So yeah, your last your last one was welterweight, I think, wasn't it? It was for the English yeah, title against yeah. Garton. So yeah. is it is that where you initially think you'll come back at, this, at, this, at welterweight? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have my first fight at eleven stone, just so um, you know, I'm not just a, a six rounder at eleven stone, just so I'm not killing myself. And then, like I say, just go from there. What, whatever fights come up, really. Like yeah. I say, I'm, I'm willing to fight at eleven stone. Um, I, I was a light middleweight when I was an amateur. I won the junior ABAs. Now I know I can, you know, and I have a lot of senior fights at eleven stone, so I can I can mix it at eleven stone, especially now as of. I've grown over the years, so yeah. yeah, whatever happens, really. Like, um, you know, I'm happy to jump on it, any show again against anyone. To be fair, so I mean, you're you're someone yeah. that I always think about the domestic dust ups when you come up. I mean, and then what, what's the goals, Tyler? I mean, you're only 25. Like some people are happy that they just sort of plod along and keep going to their 32, 33, and then yeah. then if it ain't worked out, then they look at other paths. But you know, obviously, it crossed your mind fairly early. Um, so why come back? What well, I know, I know you got the itchy knuckles, but what's the goals? Yeah, um, I've always said from day one, you know, my goal was to be a British champion, or, or you know, or fight for a British title. That's, you know, when I look back when I was a kid, you know, watching Friday Fight Night and things like that, and uh, having all the British title fights on there, or sort of, you know, that's where I wanted to be. And and more than anything, like like you know, I've sort of. I've made a bit of a legacy for myself to be in some real entertaining fights, but I'd like to be in some more. And just, you know, when I look back in, in 10, 20 years and I can say, do you know what, you know, I, I had a big support and everyone enjoyed watching my fights. You know, I'm happy with that. I know I'm never going to be a world champion. So, you know, I've, I, you know, I've come to terms with that. But if I can be in some entertaining fights and be remembered for them, then give, I've, I've given my best to the sport. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want out of it. Are there any opponents looking at it that you think would make for an entertaining fight with you and them? Um, I'm, there's quite. I mean, there's quite a few. Like, what about, what about um, Danny Connor again? I mean, me and Danny are really good friends. We um, really good mates. We've actually said that um, you know before we retire, we'd we'd have a fourth one. But he's um, he's gone down to lightweight, and I'm obviously well, uh, sort of yeah. super welter. So. Um, whether it happen or not, I don't know. But um, those fights yeah, no, are I, I like Danny. I like he's a good lad, and he's another one. He's a proper grafter. He's you know working all day, training, and he's 
training all day. So yeah, and I, I was talking know, I'm to him the other day. At, I was talking to him the other day at um, a press conference for Davbox. Obviously, he's back out the first yeah. of April. He's a, he's a nice bloke, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. When I think about you two fights, there were some wars in there, weren't there? Yeah, we had some great fights. Like um, you know, my first one, I think when I was nineteen, and that was um, that was a proper welcome to the pro game fight. That was. Um, I remember I, I woke up the next day and my, my, my face was pretty black and blue. Um, you know, after like pr- two or three pretty easy fights, I jumped in with him. And yeah, like I said, I learned a lot out of that from that fight. And then, um, yeah, we had two more after that. So, yeah, it was good. Do you, do you reckon you turned pro, were you 19 when you turned pro? Yeah, I, I was... 18, just about 19, yeah. Do you think yeah. that could be any, you know, any of the reason that sort of at a very young age, still at 25, you sort of got a little bit disillusioned with it? Or do you think it was just the amount of, you know, tough fights and stuff like that that, that, that impacted you? Um, if I'm completely honest, I turned pro too early, way too early. Um, I wish I'd turned pro perhaps about 23 with, um, with a job and that behind me and things like that. I'll, I'll be honest, like, I was... I lived in Essex for about four years um, because of you know the gym I was at and everything else, and yeah. I was just always struggling with money and, and things like that. So I ended up having to jump into big fights purely to fund my boxing career because you know having six rounders in these learning fights I couldn't, wouldn't keep me in Essex if that makes sense. Yeah, no, no. I obviously had a lot of bills to pay. You know, I had a flat and. And obviously all my training costs and that, so I just ended up jumping into some big fights. But then on the flip side, you know, I don't, I don't regret it because I have learned a lot from them fights. You know, you sometimes you get chucked in the deep end and you learn whether whether you're going to swim or not. You got to see, you know, if you if you can sort of stay in there with these guys and yeah. and obviously I can. So yeah, like I say, from 25 now, there's there's no one I no one I fear. I don't. I'm not worried about jumping in with. I've had some, I sparred some fantastic fighters over the years as well. So, yeah, I've had to, I had to learn to grow up quick in the pro game, and I, you know, I don't, um, I don't regret that. Yeah. What about the um, date wise? We're looking at a summer return for you, Tyler. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping it's going to be July time. Like I say, I'm going to speak to Pete tomorrow and just, just sort of go from there. Really. Um, yeah, just sort of see what happens. Like I say, I'm. I'm a, I'm a bit like where I don't I know heart in my heart of heart that I need a sort of six round warm up fight just to get back after having perhaps like you know nine ten months out. But yeah. there's part of me that doesn't want to do that. I want to jump into <laughs> a to a good fight and more than anything just because it motivates you to train and, and everything else. Yeah. Um, like I say, I'm working. I'm working like five, six hours a day. I need that motivation to kick me out of the ass, get out of bed, go running, go spa, go do this, you know, go do that. So yeah, especially um, if you're going up to a new weight again, like light middle. Yeah, you want you want to feel it out, wouldn't you? Feel the weight of the opponent and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just want. Yeah, I, I do. I know. I know that my heart rules in my head a lot. Um, <laughs> everyone says that. Um, I do need to listen to other people. I think, I think that's one thing I have learned as well. So. <laughs> well, you definitely got time on your side anyway, mate. So that, you know. yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 the good thing about it. You know, like I said, there's again, I've, I've always rushed myself. Even when I won the English, I was sort of like, I never took time to enjoy it. I sort of wanted to go to something straight after something bigger. Um, you know, and I wish I had, you know, perhaps defended it or whatever. But you know, the weight the weight was obviously an issue in the end, but. Um, yeah, I just got. I've got to take my time, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Well, to be honest, mate, you're a guy that I sort of watched on so many occasions in these wars, and I think it'll be great to see you back in there. Because listen, you've got unfinished business in there. I think you're definitely someone yeah. that puts on exciting fights, and listen, yeah. you've got your own goals, and I really hope you achieve them, mate. I uh, really appreciate that, Sam. Thank you very much. Mate. Pleasure talking to you, mate. Thank you for talking to Fight Talk. Yeah, cheers.